Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 476 for, uh, for this, what the hell's the date? Is it oh, June 30th, not 2015? This is the show where we talk wrestling, the big time stuff, and uh, WWE, so much more. Uh, ready to get into it with the crew. First of all, uh, straight out of Poughkeepsie, uh, he is the mad one, Mad Mike. How you doing, Sorgelstein? There will be no tough enough spoilers tonight. Jen Carlins and I are going to do a tough enough wrap up show tomorrow afternoon, so be on the lookout for that and all your Sorgatron sort of media platforms. There you go. Also with us from the for, whoa, whoa, there was a spoiler in there because I hit the wrong button. Uh, also <laughs> with us from the nether reaches of Pittsburgh, uh, is closely uh, looking for uh, the intern for Sawtooth Willie. He is a Papa Lunchbox, DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters. How you doing? Hi, everybody. That's correct. Sawtooth Willie is looking for an intern. If you would like to intern for Sawtooth Willie, send us an email at whatever the fuck. Uh, <laughs> what email for? I can't remember what we put there. Any email, panelriot at gmail.com. It will get to us at Sawtooth Willie on Twitter. If you want to be the intern, hit him up. There you go. Also with us from Johnstown, PA, it's Bobby FJ Town. Hi, I sent uh, Sawtooth Willie a tweet about a certain pigeon that somebody was looking for. Mm. I wonder if he got it. <laughs> there you go. But hi. I don't know. Also with us, he's Patreon extraordinaire. He is the corrector of uh, the 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 Spanish grammar. Grammar? No. Uh, probably just the wording and, and accent in general. He is Antonio Garza, the proprietor over at TheWrestlingRevolution.com and Patreon supporter joining us today. Hola, amigos. <laughs> I am so, so glad to be back here uh, to talk some mayhem. And I believe we don't have on the docket for you to translate anything for us tonight, but we are talking global things, so we never know where that's going to go as well. So, All right. Uh, like I said, this is a Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check us out. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. LB, are you messing with the Zoom over there? It's distracting me. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, my camera has the uh, the follow my face feature, and even though I'm sitting still, it thinks I'm not. <laughs> it just did it. I'll fix this manually, Sorg. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, it didn't follow Ooh, your face that time. Yeah, there we go. All right. It's the Wrestling there Mayhem Show, that? where we what don't understand that, yeah. uh, technology here. Uh, you can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and check out this and other shows like the Indie, Indie Mayhem Show, The Midweek War. <laughs> like these, these guys... Uh, don't, don't look at my, don't look at my um, <laughs> coat rack. Participate in. Um, like, just look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Yeah, just look at my eyes. <laughs> Yeah, look at my eyes. Yeah, look at my eyes. Let them soothe you. Nope, not that's just the left one. Okay, there. Nope, that's the right. Now, there we go. Camera one, camera two, camera one. This is not the audio people. I'm so sorry. It's okay for the audio folks. They get to hear my uh, my hypno voice. Dulcet tones. <laughs> oh jeez, um, you you can do stuff at wrestlingmamshow.com. There's social medias. There's you can you can uh, find all the links to subscribe to us so you never miss an episode of this and other shows. And you can uh, drop us a line at that email address. WMS zero. Yay! Or you can drop no, us that... a line at the phone number at four one two two zero six WMS zero. Yay. Of course, of I course. And you can also support us as it. Antonio Garza does over at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, one of our long, long time supporters over there. Uh follow him at the wrevolution.com. I I I apologize to you on Twitter, but I'm gonna do it officially on the air. I keep forgetting Woo! you have a Twitter account when I tag you from midweek war. <laughs> so I'm gonna correct that from here on. Um it's it's I have a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> I'm so it's, okay. it's a running joke. In the is it? Yeah. yeah. None of us, none of us know what his Twitter handle is. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. That's a somebody. One of you guys gave me one, and it was the wrong person, and I almost sent it out. So you almost had a new new host. 
on that show. Um, <laughs> and also, we have another guy that, that, that supports us on the Patreon, which is hard on cash into this show and has for a very long time. He's been a long time supporter of a lot of things here at Silver Trial Media. And his name, if you want to know, is Bo Diggity. Woo! I need to put get more energy in that. I apologize for that. We'll give you a better one next time. Uh, but anyways, please go uh, support the show. Get some uh, um, benefits. Like we talked about the language on the show. We talked about the fringe benefits and the language on this show. So fucking watch it. Sorg, we have not an issue with language. On no, no Dad, issues with language Dad, on the show here. No issue with language on this damn podcast. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So let's get into it with our first topic of the night that I can't remember what it was. Beast in the East! We set our alarm clocks to get up on Saturday morning. Guys, okay, let me tell you something here. Here's my disclaimer on this. I'm excited. This is a throwback for me. Because you know what this reminds me of? You know, I was the guy that... Guy, I was like six. I was the kid that set his alarm clock for 5.30 in the morning so he could watch all of the cartoons, okay? I'm used to this. I'm used to this. I didn't sleep in. I got cartoons to watch because we got one morning in the week to do that when I grew up. And that's what happened. You guys are spoiled. You kids with your Netflix kids and your, your Disney XD and your cartoon network, an entire damn network of cartoons. Well, you know what? We also had a wrestling on Saturday morning, and now we got it again, and it's live from Tokyo with the Beast in the East, and I'm damn doing it. I'm going to get some, I'm going to go buy some Lucky Charms. I don't even have cereal in the house. We don't eat it. John Cena diet got made us throw it all out, but I'm going to get some Lucky Charms for this because the wife's out of town, okay? Um, wait, wait, the John Cena, the, wait, the, the John Cena um, diet doesn't let you have cereal, yet Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles is a conflict of interest because I'm pretty sure yeah. it is. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it's fruit. It's fruit. It's good for you. You're allowed a cheat day. No, fruit's good for you. you. Can, no, no. John Cena? John Cena died. No fruit. No fruit. No fruit? No fruit. What monster is John Cena? <laughs> it's, a, it's sound. It's sound. But, anyways. Outside of that, I'm eating my cereal, and I'm going to watch, uh, first of all, Brock Lesnar absolutely destroy Kofi Kingston. Do we think that match is still happening? I have no yeah. idea. I have no I idea. I don't think so. I think it's just be Cesaro. Cesaro. Yes. I, I want to think it, it happens, but just because uh, Biggie Langston and Xavier are going to interfere, so it's going to be a 3 on one That'd be great. Be. And then he's just going to destroy the, the New Day. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I mean, in the long run, think of this as a Saturday Saturday night's main event as far as like the level of matches we're going to have here. Like, they're not going to be something conclusive. Maybe we'll have a title change to make things special I for so. NXT. I, I feel like we're going that way, but you never know. I think it's time. But but still, this, this is kind of unprecedented that we've had something like this. This is again WWE Network, much like Elimination Chamber, kind of pulling things out of their butt here. Like even though I mean, probably a lot of us aren't going to watch it live, a lot of you guys, a lot of the the people in general aren't going to watch it live at five thirty in the morning or two thirty in the morning Pacific time, for instance. That's actually better. <laughs> it it kind of is too, right? But you'll be up until like five there. A anyways, a either way, it's a ridiculous time. That's why it's not a pay per view for one thing, uh, uh, spe you know, specifically a pay per view. Uh, it, it, but but it's something different, it, and we'll see what the presentation is like. I feel like we're gonna see a show filmed with the travel entrance. Anybody else with me on that? I don't think they're taking the entire entrance to to Japan unless they expect to do a lot of these. I don't think they're going to take any entrance in Japan. I think they're just going to let the sumo hall be the entrance. Wow. You think so? Like, may, like maybe you'll have one logo just to show that it's a WWE product. But right. Yeah, right. I can't I can't see them bringing the whole travel entrance all because the way over there. I, I hope they bring Fandango's uh, sign. I, I feel like the, 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 the I feel like all the stuff that's in uh, in Europe, I think stays in Europe. I feel like there's a storage locker with all the uh, WWE stuff. <laughs> They're gonna have the taxi cab and the phone. Sorg, yeah. Sorg. Japanese event. Sorg, I'm sure you're probably it. right, but there's a slight problem with Tokyo not being in Europe. Well, yeah, the, but that's why I'm saying I don't expect tech to be. I don't expect all their stuff to be there. That's not like giant travel stuff. You gotta think how many trucks of thing of of uh, of of 
you know, the set, you know, you'll get a slim down set that that's the one that they brought over there. They, they dust it off twice a year to do the uh, Raw and SmackDown tapings, for instance. Right. And they don't do anything bigger than that. And I'm trying to remember what like Insurrection and all those ones used to look like set wise, too. But I think they were pretty limited as well. So Taxi Kevin phone booth. <laughs> but of course you got that i mean you, you can put that in your carry your carry on on the plane on the way over right but anyway you're allowed one taxi cab and one uh telephone booth per person so i want to do i want to do this kind of jeez i want to do this kind of pay-per-view style since it really looks like one right rock the Azure Co- uh, this is the the uh, scheduled event so far is, is there a listing on the website can somebody check for me on ww.com i don't think there is i don't believe there is i don't no. think there I is think the only the only card we've seen is from uh like uh, dirt, sheet, dirt sheets and stuff. Right, right. The so Japanese the, WWE website had it on. This is what they're reporting so far, and I'm trying to see if they have a source of this as well. Other matches currently scheduled for the live event. There's probably just the live event emails or whatever they're translating. Brock Lesnar, Kofi Kingston, as we joked about. Okay, well, still, Brock is in uh, attraction, and to see him in a match is just going to be enough, right? And maybe there will mm-hmm. be something going on with Seth. I have a feeling you will have storyline stuff here. Okay? Like, at least minimally. That that will show on 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 Monday night, right? Like you missed this. Go pay nine ninety nine so you so you can check it out. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Neville. Come on, that's gonna be fun. Come on, that's gonna it. be great. That's gonna be great. Lucha Dragons versus Big E and Xavier Woods. That okay, that will be, be that'll be good. John oh, Cena yes. and Dolph Ziggler versus Kane and King Barrett. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, okay, it could be. That's that could be all right. That's different. That's I'm okay with different. Right? Why aren't we getting those kind of matches on Raw? Right. Uh, this is where that's this is where it feels like Saturday Night's main event to me. You know, like, like something different. Like let's have Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior team up for no reason. Oh, we're setting up WrestleMania six. Got it. Uh, anyways, uh, Divas title match: Naomi Page and Nikki Bella. Oh, that should be good. I actually should be good. That should be really good. I, I, wish, they, I wish they'd throw Alicia Fox in there. Right, right. But, but the three Alicia of those Fox really good last night. Three of those together a few pay per views ago was really good. Uh, and Cesaro versus Diego. What? And Cesaro, what? Uh, was it? Switch out. Um, I mean, at least he's working it. And of Trey course, Kofi for Cesaro, and that, I'll be fine with it. And of course, NXT Championship, and this may actually headline the show. I feel like Kevin Owens and um, Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. Keep uh, in mind, Brock's headlining that show. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, but I, but, but everybody, I think is well, okay. It's wait, 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 wait. Okay, I guess, I guess the question is, and I know the answer to this already. Who's the bigger star in Japan? Brock or Finn Balor? Answer is Brock, because Brock was IWGP champion as well. I don't know about that, Sorg. <laughs> really? I'd say Finn is more over in Japan than Brock is. Okay. In America, Brock's definitely got the edge, but I'd say right, in right, Japan. Right. But I think if you, if you tell Japanese guys Prince Devitt's coming home, he's going home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to be the demon. He's going to be all painted up and everything. And this is better. This had better be the biggest entrance for him. Mm-hmm. It has to be. It has to be. You know, I know they're building up and eventually we'll get our WrestleMania holy crap thing uh, from Finn Balor where he like flies in on the wings of a bat or something. Um, but uh, that's happening. I'm calling it right now. But, uh, you know, drug you know, yeah, like Drago. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna say, like Drago. I, I, I can't wait for this point. I've been catching up on the Lucha Underground because of the <laughs> big interview we have at the end of July, and that keeps moving on LB's camera. <laughs> it keeps throwing me off because it's right beside my camera. He's right, like I'm looking at you guys. LB's right there in my in my purview, and he just keeps going. Boop, 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 boop. Anyways, I'm sorry. Uh, wow. Anyways, I, any any spe- <laughs> LB as your camera is going insane. <laughs> I got What's two up? questions for you. <laughs> Presuming oh, yeah. you have the WWE Network that I can't remember if you do or not, don't answer that. Uh, would you be uh, waking up for this card at least? Uh, what day is it? Uh, Saturday morning. July 4th. 4th Saturday July. morning. July 4th. Come on, man. Get the Fruity Pebbles. Come on over. Watch at my place. Maybe. We'll have a Maybe. slumber party. That's it, man. This is it. This is their new thing. You have pay-per-view parties. You got the WWE Network foreign show slumber party. We're... Happy we're, birthday, Mark. We're, Let's go we're, we're in our 30s. <laughs> <laughs> we're Happy in our birthday, 30s. Mark. Let's all slumber together and wake up to Brock Lesnar. So, watch Japan. Yeah. Watch, and watch Japan. I mean, why not? I mean, we get up in the morning and watch pretty much anime anyways, right? Um, but, uh, but LB, what, what are the thoughts, actual thoughts that you have for this? <laughs> I would actually really like to see Kofi and Brock have a match. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be a lot of fun. I am, have not soured on Kofi Kingston. And uh, I think if they 
make it more than a squash match could be could be a good uh, good thing to watch. I think Kofi's going into ragdoll mode. <laughs> Oh yeah. oh, yeah. This is going to be a bump machine for him. I, I think the only reason this isn't Dolph Ziggler is because A, Dolph's a face, and two, head trauma. No. Kofi, <laughs> it's okay. the only reason this isn't a Dolph Ziggler match. Kofi, Kofi Kingston is going to be Brock Lesnar's Colby Carino. Yep. <laughs> yes, that's entirely accurate. If you watch ROH, you'll know Kobe, Colby Carino is a bump um, machine. Yeah. Colby Carino... Um, Oh, what was the guy in ECW that was being tossed around? Uh, Cheeseburger. He's no, oh. he's in IWC now. Oh, what? Uh, oh, I cannot think of his name. Colin. Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, Colin Delaney. Colin Delaney. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, Sorg, in the, in the chat, Matt says he'll bring the Pop-Tarts. Oh, dude, this is happening. Slumber party at my place. The lady's out of town. Let's do this. Let's do this, guys. <laughs> Let's make this happen. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I have a question about this. About the slumber party or the show? Uh, the show. Okay. If this is a success, do you think WWE might start doing this more often for house shows? Absolutely. Like, I mean, because you had The Rock show up at Boston. Imagine if that was on the network. You know, a nice little surprise like that. Or... Since they don't do Raws or pay-per-views really at Madison Square Garden anymore, how about show like because oh. they always have a they always have a post-Christmas house show right in Madison Square Garden. Put down the network He's because so they amazing. always do some really cool shit at that one. Would they be house shows? Then? Well, they they still are, but but they, 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 there's something different, especially do about those ones. Or if they go to Canada sometimes, you know, or or this thing that just happened in Boston, for instance, right? Or they go to China or South Korea, or right? Because for or some reason, Africa. like Madison Square Garden never has Raw or SmackDown anymore, right? It doesn't hold enough people for them to justify yeah. it. Really? Wow. Well, no, it, it's a it's a combination of not having enough people and. The exorbitant price that MSG asked for tickets. Okay, okay. If you look at Barclays Center tickets and um, Jersey tickets, they're you know relatively common. You look at MSG. So, so basically, MSG is 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 writing the history and bumping up the prices, and that's not going to work for a RAW. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. Actually. So I mean, that's, that's like they'll have an occasional pay per view there, but even SummerSlam, that's going to Brooklyn. Instead mm -hmm. of uh, Manhattan this year, so it has to be something pretty big, like like well, I guess Royal Rumble. I guess they haven't had anything big since that Royal Rumble that we went to, right? Um, no, they had Survivor Series in I want to say twenty ten. Right. That's the when where, the, the Rock. Rock and Cena teamed up. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that was a big deal, so I think that was worth it for them. Yeah. You know, regular Survivor say Series. No. Heck no. What? Say no to MSG and GMO foods. <laughs> Thank you for that, Bobby. Any other thoughts? Uh, 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 Garza, do you have any thoughts about this? Uh, I don't know. It's going to be weird. Uh, I, I, I do kind of see them starting to do more house shows. But uh, like this time this time they're going to use one of the Rock, the Brock Lesnar appearances. So I'm not sure what they could do for other shows. Because mm -hmm. they need to be like careful of not like spending more and tying your, your roster than they already are so it should be interesting it, isn't the roster like split that aren't like isn't there gonna be like a house show somewhere else in canada or something like that and then the japanese show too yeah yeah i don't see like anyone else going aside from the guys that are already in the mm -hmm. car right right yeah anyway that's why we, well, we had to split it we have to make sure there's a matador on every card apparently that's why we split them up so are they split up by the way, I, I, I saw the, and I hope Eamon's in the chat for this, I saw again the uh, the San Antonio El Matadores where they're talking about how they haven't fought bulls in a while since they've hung out with Torito, and they end up on on the uh, bull riding machine. Still one of my <laughs> can I favorite. Say, can I just say real quick, the best part of Swerve last night was, <laughs> uh, was, was Primo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there were children around. He was going to sign the, the dirty old lady's boobs. Yep, and they're like, "There's children around," and he was just like, "All right." Primo, He's Primo did trouble. not hesitate. He, he got did not hesitate on that one, Bobby. That was great. If you're not watching Swerve, you honestly should be. It's it it, a it got so way better that second episode. I gotta say, mm -hmm. it got way oh, better. Man. I mean, Seth it's, Rollins getting pumped out by the security guard was amazing. 
It was good. It was good. It, it, it's fun. It, I, you love those behind the scenes things, and it's something different. Also, side note: uh, we're getting into a whole other thing. But um, if you haven't had a chance, and you think you, you think it's a weird thing, but watch the first look for the uh, Monday Night Wars DVD, yeah. where they have I, Renee yeah, Young has Renee Young has a sit down with Triple H and Sting about the Monday Night Wars. Really I'm cool. Sorry, yeah. It's about thirty minutes of that. I don't know how much more of that is on the DVD, but if, just go they, check that out. Is they it, do like a uh, from what I've given to understand, they have the first ten episodes of the Monday Night War on there, mm-hmm. and they do kind of like a post show with Triple H and Sting after every episode. I just want that. Well, you know, hopefully they put that on the network, or they'll put that on the network eventually, of course. Like, yeah, exactly. It do- that doesn't justify to me buying it. No. Def- like def- if you've seen the Monday Night War, like if you've seen it all on the network, do not get this DVD. If no. you don't have the network, get it. Because the Monday Night War documentary is very good, and it looks like the post interviews are going to be a lot of fun too. But just based on that little teaser they had, although Sting kind of repeated himself a lot mm-hmm. already, mm-hmm. so I don't know what he's really going to add to the proceedings. I, I feel like I feel like he's still being tactful. Yeah, because he didn't I feel really. Like it should have been Hogan or. Fish off well, he's he's the big like, this. look, we got Sting guys, and we got put him here. You haven't seen us before. I mean, that that let's be honest, that's the reason. That it's really is the reason. Um, and but I think generally he had a really good conversation. I mean, even even if you go back to like the Brett and Sean one, it was really kind of wooden, and everybody was kind of protecting themselves and and everything too. But you still got them together, and Jim Ross is grilling them, and and you got the the whole story on everything that happened there, right? So I wish I'd do more stuff like that. Because they they were saying that they were going to do like a rock and awesome one, and we never got that. Right. Well, I think that turned into rivalries to a certain point, but they never got them to sit down. Dude, the money to try to get those guys in the same room has probably got to be ridiculous. Well, yeah, I'd imagine it was rock. I mean, I'm pretty sure Austin. I, I, well, I think both of them. I think absolutely both of them at this point. I mean, Austin does not need WWE. Period. That's true. Period. He has. He is Emmy. He is Emmy considered. Really? Because of what the reality show? Yeah, no, the reality show is uh, legit. Him and Rock are both Emmy considered hosts of reality shows. Rock, oh, because Rock did that other show. Rock did uh, the show on TNT. I forget the name of it, but I, I know. Yeah, they're, okay, they're both up um, for Emmy consideration. Also, be the first he got. while we're diving down this rat hole, I've been watching the new show Ballers with the Rock. I wouldn't give any interest or second chance to that show if it wasn't for him being in it. Yeah, it's not um, it's not terribly great. It's not it doesn't really stand out to me other than it's him and Rob Cordry. And he's very good in it. I like his I like his interactions with Rob Cordry. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to you got to appreciate that. But um but no no no, that's that's he's the rock, which is always great. Um but I think everything else around him kind of sucks. It's like it's like a lesser entourage with sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Give us some time. Maybe we'll find its voice. I'm still also not sold on. How can you get lesser than entourage? (laughs) Bobby, there are ways. All right. On that note, please. Hey, guys, uh, we got a lot going on, including uh, uh, we have friends in the wrestling industry. Sometimes they're on this show. Sometimes they're on other shows here. Uh, But you can go check out our friends at PittsburghWrestling.com. Okay, that's my site, but still, uh, we're recording our friends at IWC, the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, including recently uh, Tracy Smothers, this great super indie, including Ring of Honor's uh, Raymond Rowe, as well as Cedric Alexander, taking on taking each other on for the first time ever before they met in a tag team match at the pay-per-view the following week, for instance. Uh, I, it's a weird name to put out there, but Sugar Dunkington, really cool guy, great wrestler. And we talked with him on the Indie Mayhem show, as well as other, uh, the other two that I mentioned from Ring of Honor, other participants of the Super Indie Tournament, and other great releases like, uh, Finding Zach Gowan on digital download, Prime Cuts with friends of the show like Zima Zion, Zima, Zima, Shima Zion, now known as DJZ. There's a lot of rough letters in there um who's who's been kicking ass uh, uh in the dj circuit actually if you follow his facebook that's amazing <laughs> um you can sample some of his stuff if you're if you're into that sort of music and maybe you probably also listen to apple music if that's the coin because that's all electronic music too that's another show though um but pittsburghwrestling.com uh support the show by supporting indie wrestling and so much more. Speaking of indie wrestling, um, this is practically indie wrestling, it feels like. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Who's got the positive spin on this? 
on what? On TNA and Global Force and the Slammiversary yeah, paper. Oh, we got it. We got a volunteer. <laughs> I want to say, individual. whatever, does. Does. whatever yeah. happens here, I just want to say we are all in the same vein. I, if I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what, Sorg. Wait, oh, you're going to do this one? Pick a side for me. Pick a side for you. <laughs> Pick any side, either side, and okay. I will argue for it. T- okay. Tony said he, he's on the good side. He's on the good side. GW, GFW. Yeah. I like TNA. Oh, LB, let's put you on the positive side. But I want to say, regardless of how this conversation goes, we all want <laughs> TNA to succeed. We all want them to be a force in wrestling. Jobs for people. We've, yes. we've said this multiple and, times. And we. This is also nothing against the performers no because with no. what they're given they try and make the best of it right they do wonders the only time i will get angry with a specific performer is maybe a little bit later in this discussion and we will bring him up and call him out by name we will so, we will we will a certain friend of the show so, um but yeah. anyways so so tna slammiversary happened global force is coming up I have my opinions on it, but first let's go with the positive spin. Antonio Garza, what are your thoughts on TNA Slammiversary and this interesting connection with the upstart <clears throat> uh, Global Force Wrestling with Jeff Jarrett? The, the way I see it right now is that uh, TNA uh, needed something big to try and bring ratings in and try to get the name out there. Global Force Wrestling needs anything to get the name out there. So what I imagine happened here is that TNA went to several promotions and said, hey, we kind of want to do an invasion angle. Uh, so, hey, Ring of Honor, you want to do an invasion angle? No, we don't want to. And at the end, they went to Jeff Jarrett and said, hey, let's come to a deal. So I, I think it's possible. I think it's something different that we've seen. Like, I can't remember the last time we saw like a promotion to promotion invasion since the WCW WWF one. Um, hold on, didn't like don't Ring of Honor and New Japan cross over all the time? Yeah, that's not an invasion. Really that's invasion. Yeah. yeah, I thought yeah. they had kind of an invasion thing. Uh, no, they just sent uh, their guys over. Okay, but it's not like a war between them. Although it was still on global wars. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I was going to say, I'm like, but no, but I don't no, know, the, the impression they gave off kind of seemed no, like it was a just bit. A, a trading of talent for, for both, the benefit of both worlds. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that uh, it, it's possible that TNA is trying to do something. Like, if they're actually getting canceled, they're, they're still trying to do something for, for them. So, like, I give them all the props for that. All right, all right. They they realized the invasion angle sucked, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sucked, but because the people writing it sucked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They dropped the ball in a big way. Yeah, Listen, they did because Global that, Force. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Bobby. I was just going to say the ECW uh, turn during the invasion angle for WWE was amazing. And then they just, you know, but. <laughs> so, so, Sorg, I'm on the positive side of this, right? I think so, yes. Okay. All right, here's the deal. Global Force Wrestling coming into TNA, and I think eventually if they were to just take over TNA, is the best possible thing to happen for TNA currently. Because as we've said before, uh, the wrestlers and the talent are not to blame. They're not the problem here. The problem is the management and to that end, TNA is the punchline to a joke that we've been telling for years now. Mm-hmm. When you remove that element, you have a lot of talented wrestlers under a new banner. It can actually be a fresh start if they bring in different management, if they bring in someone with a different vision and a different look on it. The letters TNA going away, the letters Impact Wrestling going away, are the best possible thing that could happen. Is, now, is it Jeff Jarrett? Is he the best candidate to do this? Maybe not, but he's probably has a different, <laughs> a different group of people he's going to bring in, and it's better than what we've got so far. It's a fresh coat of paint. We need to chip away the old paint. <laughs> we need to chip away the old paint. We need to remodel the whole house. We need to um, tear down these walls. We need to uh, move these refrigerators. We need to replace the wiring. 
Yeah, exactly. but that's why taking this talent and putting them into a new company is what is needed. Uh, I don't. It's. I don't think Jeff Jarrett is going to have different ideas, though. I. I don't. I mean, he's already using a six-sided ring. He's basically taking any kind of talent that isn't nailed down somewhere else including a lot of TNA talent. I mean, the reason we were even excited about the WWE, WCW invasion angle is because it was people who hadn't been in a ring together before. Uh This is just going to be another episode of Impact because all of these guys have wrestled each other before. Yeah, but there's some new guys starting in there. But, But Global Force Wrestling doesn't have a roster. No. They have a collection of guys who, if they're in the area, will show up at a baseball field. Yeah, there's they, 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 looking at the, you know, John McChesley's doing one in Erie, right? Uh, Johnny Gargano's doing one in Cleveland. They're, the local boys are coming out for this this uh, big uh, indie show. And, uh, and, and, and Global Force is imitating TNA right down to bringing 300 people to a baseball stadium. You know, I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, it's, it, it seems like TNA Part 2. It doesn't seem like anything new, but the color scheme, and and I'm not sold on it. And and if this is just, I cannot see. I was making the point. I just don't see this turning into anything other than Impact Wrestling just becoming Global Force. And and I I brought the, I brought this up on the Midweek War. They unveiled a new X Division title <laughs> that is colored green just like global force I mean, wrestling. That seems like your big clue right there to me. <laughs> yes, but why? Like this is what I'm talking about with TNA with Global Force. There's no forethought into anything that they do. Like they announced the King of the Mountain match before realizing, oh wait, we don't have anything for people to hang for the match. So they had to take the old busted ass global championship and put a new Jeff Jarrett like side panel on it. Like there's no forethought into anything. They're just grabbing at straws because Nixie just doesn't want to admit that she's failed. Like she doesn't want to sell off the company because in her, I'm guessing in her mind, that would be a failure. In actuality, she should just let someone take it over completely. Like, just ha- let them have creative control. Let them ask the people what they want to ask. Because I'm sorry, Kurt Angle should not be wrestling anymore. All right, let's bring us back to the positive note. Antonio Garza, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I agree with Mike with the, the fact that TNA just sometimes does a lot of things just out of nowhere without really thinking of the future. <laughs> Uh, I mean, just the fact of, of how they did their tapings and their pay-per-view out of, like, nowhere. The, the car had pretty much, it was pretty much non-canon. But uh, I, I think this, if w, uh, if Global Force and TNA do merge, I think that's the, the end game, to remove Dixie. Because my understanding is that this talks didn't start like until five days before it was announced. So I don't think Jeff White had it, it's not the, the like the master plan to to create uh, global force to to replace DNA. So I am pretty sure that Jeff uh would wouldn't want to work with Dixie as, again as a as a company. So I can totally see them replacing her. Uh, and I think at this point, Jeff has grown up a bit. I don't think he's, uh, he's the same Jeff Jarrett that wants to be like the champion of the promotion he cancels. Hopefully. I don't know. Uh, and he, he could also bring Scott Damore, which was the guy who made the knockouts once, like the greatest thing in the world. So he may have the connections. I mean, he could br- bring a... Uh, Striker, he has connections with AAA with New Japan, so I mean, there's a positive side in bringing in Jeff and replacing Dixie with that. 
All right. And we'll be talking about this more actually later because uh, uh, one Dustin is back with his three questions that will make us uh, last all night on this podcast. So I want to I want to save some time for that real quick. And we have to go, Mike. Yeah, no. Um, do you guys remember before WCW died when they brought back Eric Bischoff and Vince Russo? That's what this is right now. That's what this is. They're bringing back the guy that started it all, and that didn't help matters. Oh, oh. So, David Arquette, looking for you as TNA champ. Or can the Mountain champion, nope, perhaps. It's going to be Toby Keith. Oh, they're Toby, Toby Keith. Toby Keith. <laughs> Pac-Man, Pac-Man Jones. For America. For America. That's what's going to happen. All right. So, uh, with that, please uh, let us know your thoughts on that. And like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more with the three questions later from Dustin. Uh, but in the meantime, please support our friends that are supporting us with great pepperoni pizza for Pittsburgh podcasting. I got it right here, guys, because it's just me and Roman Reigns sharing a pizza earlier. I'm going to munch it on some of this afterwards because I had to rush in here. There you go. Slice on Broadway. Some great stuff. That's not even the good. That's not even the great one. We had the Gonzo pizza in here last week. It got Chance joining us. Great illustrator. Check him out. Chance underscore second. Uh, but SliceOnBroadway.com is where you can find more information. They're in the Beachview neighborhood here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. As well as Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street. Tell them you said, tell them that the Mayhem Show sent you. And you can tell them that on social media if you're not in the Pittsburgh area and you're getting hungry. And at least you're hopefully supporting your local uh, pizza establishment. I tried to sawtooth Willie a term there, and it didn't work out at all. <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, LB, you know what I'm trying to say there? Uh... <laughs> No, no, he doesn't, because I, I don't know what's going on. You're thinking, you're thinking constabula- constabulary. Yeah, that might be it. That might be it. Which is, But that's not establishment. Those are the cops. Oh, okay. <laughs> not what, what you, I'm talking what about. Do is, what you got to do is you got to go, go down there to your local pizza establishment. <laughs> give me money. <laughs> and then give me pizza, and that's how, you, that's how business works. <laughs> oh, we're going to start new ads with, with Sawtooth Willie next recording. <laughs> um, oh, Sawtooth Willie, really. check out SorgatronMedia.com slash, uh, or just SorgatronMedia.com and find out how you can become an intern for Sawtooth Willie as well. Um, as a side note, geez, uh, 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 PGH or Slice underscore PGH. Oh, how does that go? Damn it. I don't think I've been saying the right one. I think it's Slice under PGH underscore Slice. Damn it. Thank you. Uh, hit or them slice up on Twitter. PGH, uh, or Slice underscore PGH. Hit them both up and tell them you heard about them on the Mayhem Show because we just said them. Uh, Slice on Broadway on your Facebook and your Instagrams as well. Hey, we'll be right back. We're going to take a look at what happened across the Sorgatron Media Network last week and then the big question. He's going to join me on camera A. Your mind will be blown. He's coming over here. We got the MacBook. We're going to try not to drop it. So so it feels like I'm pushing a button. Now push down even harder. He had a good time with uh, with Mr. Seabat. Chase rats around in the corner. He'd point out and he'd uh, give the Latin Latin time for the rats. I learned that the, uh, the race for father of the year is as wide open as ever. Uh, you know, Kevin Owens, sure. King Carino, sure. Papa Frisco, Papa Lethal. <laughs> I mean, the quality parenting going on in professional wrestling these days. Oh, oh I've never had a percent. game crash on me before. Jeez. It deleted the game, sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. Before. That's a problem. Yeah. That's a little bit of a problem. Yeah. I've had an Xbox freeze, but I didn't have an Xbox to then recursively destroy everything on the hard drive. Yeah, yeah. Let's try, let's try to see a rocks and Mandarin on Kevin Owens. That, that, uh, that was pretty messed up. That like John Cena like turned into a porn heel in the middle of his uh, promo. Just uh, <laughs> where did he become law resistance? What's happening? <laughs> oh my! You know, if you don't reach out, it's it's not cool to be the wallflower talking to the people you're comfortable with i talked about earlier on wrestling mayhem show about hey this is the guy that i run into at all the networking events and at least like ah other tall guy that knows wrestling i'm gonna go talk to him first and we'll see what happens from there inside the box we have uh, our own software that that, and and circuitry that makes it possible to take input from all sorts of devices whether it's joysticks like the flight joystick we had just there for a demo a uh, wheelchair joystick that you use for a powered wheelchair. Are you aware and and have you seen or experienced the uh, Jimmy Wang Yang's redneck party bus that I hear so much about? I I am, and there's also a princess bus. Um, I mean, I haven't partied on the party bus okay. myself. <laughs>
Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Game-a-thon for youth arts programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Toonsium or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start! Yeah! We are back, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that look back at the week that was in Sorgatron Media. Maybe check out some of those other shows, The Boss Battle, The Awesome Cast, all at SorgatronMedia.com. So, with that, let's uh, take a look at the biggest of big questions, but the biggest of big questioners. It's not a comment on anything size-wise for him. It is Papa Lunchbox, unless you want it to be. Hey, hey, hey. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, nope. Nope. No okay. Uh, uh, I do have a question. It has something to do with uh, the questions that we've been asking over the previous week. I figure why not make it a trilogy? Uh, and I've got it written down here. It was inspired, credit where credit is due, by Rizdefer. Hmm. Um, so we've had, hi Riz, we've had a lot of people leaving uh, promotions recently and the big question this week is of those who have left who have made the decision to uh uh leave their comfy contracted homes and um uh sail the rougher and potentially more lucrative waters who will do the best now who are we talking about in the in the people that have left People category. who have left, the people who have left recently, the the recent departures that we've been reporting on. Pick one. <laughs> All I right. One. Anybody have it to Bobby? I got one. Um, Austin Aries. Okay. I, th- I think Austin Aries is either going to land in Lucha Underground or NXT for sure. He just signed a t- with a talent agency. Uh, I think something's going to happen with him. Okay. Okay. That's my problem. I don't even know what the entire list of departures has been. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of a sliding list. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say, and this this is not really recent departure, but I'm gonna say Alberto El Patron. Uh, Del Rio left WWE contract, which was really good money, and he's making he's making a lot of strides on the Indies and in Lucha Underground. Of course, he's been ROH, he's been AAA. He's able. to He's basically able to do whatever he wants now, and he's really, really having a lot of fun doing it. He's even going to be at a promotion um, up by me, uh, teaming with Rey Mysterio against the Young Bucks. And if that isn't something you're interested in, then I don't know what to tell you. Hmm. It's going to be a super kick fiesta. (laughs) (laughs) I see what you There you go. There you go. Uh, I actually have to agree with Bobby. Um uh, with Austin Aries, I think um, he's kind of floated around a little bit, and um, if he can get in with the right people and get on the right lists, then um, Austin Aries has a bright future wherever he decides to go. I, I, I too would have liked to agree with. Uh, That's both. that voice is Riz joining us Hi. here. Hi, let the people know who you are since we're. Having oh, a lot I, going I didn't on. know we were going to do that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the Riz from Riz Plays Games. Um, so, even though I do agree with Austin Aries would have been a great fit in NXT, another one that we have probably have to mention is uh, Magnus. Even though I think he just signed with uh, DFW. <laughs> so he signed with TNA. Yeah, so basically it's a, it's a lateral move. Uh, but I would have liked to see him in other parts maybe in wwe maybe in edit in roh maybe in even lucha who knows uh i just feel like i I just feel like it would have been probably i i i like mag magnus as a wrestler and also he could bring back mickey james from the dead (laughs) borderline criminal okay okay (sighs) Okay, uh, who's next? Who's next? Who's got the next I'll one? do it. Okay. Do. Wheels joins us. Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitter has, has been here. Everybody jumped in. Apparently they lifted their limits on Hangout. Holy crap. Uh, I think we did. My wheels, goodness. Wheels, what's your opinion? Okay, it's it's kind of going with Riz's thing, because I'm going to go for the murderer 
Mr. James Storm. <laughs> and I think he'd make a great, okay, pardon the pun, great impact in Lucha Underground. You got the Cowboys and the Mexicans. And I think that would be awesome to have them, like, them healing it up down there. Awesome. All right. What about you, Matt Carlin's also joining us, our friend in the mainstream media? Thanks, Sorg. I'm also a big believer in the cowboy James Storm, even mm-hmm. though he did do something borderline criminal. <laughs> um, the nice thing about borderline. borderline. <laughs> <laughs> That's what TNA's official hey, report said. That's never, what TNA's official report said. Never convicted. Okay. <laughs> um, the nice thing. The nice thing about James Storm is that. He can talk, so his career can extend far beyond just his wrestling years. He could be a great manager, like Riz, like like Will said in in Lucha Underground. If you want to go that way, I could see him landing in WWE and being a great manager for a long time. Good talker, high ceiling. I believe in the Cowboy, Young Zeb Cool, kinda. <laughs> sure. Well, Antonio Garza, you've been quiet on this. What do you think? Yeah, well, I was on fire because, okay, so say, I think, uh, I don't think Jay Storm and Magnus are going to leave TNA. I think they're just doing this KK. But, uh, so I'm going to go with Alton Arias, which seems to be really leaving. And I think, uh, booking is correctly, and, uh, and Austin is like in a good mood. He can go back to Ring of Honor and maybe become a stable back there. Does anybody see Austin Aries popping up in NXT potentially? I do. I, 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 I think he's got too much of an attitude. Yeah, I can see that. I, okay. I, I honestly, I do, that's, do, why, do. I, that's why honest. I didn't say Austin Aries personally. I've never met him. Mm-hmm. I've only heard a lot of stories. Mm-hmm. And none of them good. And to be so honest, I, I, but to be honest. Too many years, too many years, too much mileage. I, I, that's I, what mm-hmm. I think are the two biggest things working against But to him. be honest, I, to, to, to be honest, and, and I know he's, he's, he's in a creative capacity, they hired Jimmy Jacobs. And I, who I think is also notorious for being difficult as well. Was so. it Jimmy Jacobs or was it Austin Aries who was running around in the Indies as somebody else? As, like he had a different name. And I, uh, yeah, I think you're thinking Austin Aries because he came to IWC and he, he, Austin Star, he called Austin himself. Austin Star, yeah. that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Always, always had his dick out. Oh, oh. yeah. I think Chrissy Hammy knows that firsthand. Wasn't that a wasn't that a TNA gimmick? Austin Starr was a TNA gimmick, yeah. Yeah, but when he came to the Indies, he was like, I don't know who Austin Aries is, but Austin Starr, et cetera, et cetera. So I, mean, I, I remember uh, him being IWC, and he was like completely selling and no selling the, the Samoa Joe match we were playing on a TV beside him. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an interesting character. So um, did we miss anybody? Is that everybody inclusive? Did we really just do that? <laughs> <laughs> um oh i guess me um of the people I, and i'm looking at the big thank you for whoever posted the big tna board on the facebook uh i was looking at that to see who was recently let go from there uh but uh i think of all those i think havoc oh yeah i you know i wasn't even thinking knockouts any any of the knockouts that left I think could kick ass anywhere else. Right, exactly, and, and I'm hoping somebody like like Havoc or maybe Mickey James potentially could do come back at least in a small capacity, maybe in an NXT Rhino capacity of some sort. Um, just have some. Could you imagine Mickey James just coming in and have some kick ass matches with Sasha Banks for no reason at all? So I hate to break you about Mickey James, but I, um, you might want to be sitting down for this. But James Storm pushed her in front of a train. <sighs> Borderline criminal. Borderline yeah, criminal. I know. I know. And, and, and I hate to break the gimmick, but something tells me tomorrow night she's going to be just fine. Um, <laughs> but I, how great would it be to see Karma show up in NXT? Like <laughs> Sasha Banks takes down Alexa Bliss or whoever her next challenger is, then all of a sudden Karma makes a Samoa Joe like entrance, and you get the Boss versus the Beast. That'd be good. That'd be good. That'd be good. You hear that, or or Paige taps Karma to go against the Bella Twins. All it's right. pretty sad when she like disappeared as fast as she got back to TNA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So um, with that, uh, if you have an answer, you know, I, I thought we'd throw back a little. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys don't know who this is, but you had some some really good matches, and he's popping up again uh, very soon with Five Star Wrestling uh, here north of the city at uh, their TV tapings. Jimmy DeMarco. Let's 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 throw one in for him. <laughs> if you answer the question on Twitter or email uh, with the hashtag uh, WMS Big Question, we're going to send you uh, it's a little sampling of a friend of the show and find out why chanting sex in an indie ra- ma- uh, indie wrestling show became a thing for a while. I looked at the trailer for this. Oh wait, was this the trailer for this or is this something? I think it was this video. Uh, it, there's a uh, look for Jimmy DeMarco Hyper Crush uh, remix, and uh, there's an interesting music video you can you can uh, check. Out. They they used it to uh, hype him coming back at five star, for instance. So, sort, uh, sort, sort, if, I, if I may, if I may. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've experienced much with Jimmy DeMarco. I have. <laughs> I think we all have on some level. I, I've, I've been violated by this man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as much as all seriousness, um, this is the best cover art of any yeah, a... of any DVD cover. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. In the IWC library, in Storytron Media library, anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just a picture and, of him and fun as a fact kid. about fun fact about Jimmy DeMarco, uh, he is one of the only people who I think probably got his penis onto a, onto a mayhem show. Uh, and banned us from Justin TV. Yep. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you answer this week's big question, and hashtag a big question, we will send you a vial of Jimmy DeMarco's semen for your very own. You Borderline go. criminal. Borderline criminal. <laughs> it is somehow still legal to send semen. Y'all, the SWAT team just showed up again. <laughs> Suck my muscles. That's all. Well, last 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 week last week uh, there was a question as well, um, and 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 those people were lucky enough to get best of Chris Hero in IWC, uh, and we had some answers. One from Wheels. Hey, Wheels answering this question via email, but he's here. Uh, he says uh, the well, the question last week was who would who would benefit from leaving the uh, WWE or wherever they might be. And you said, Wheels, do you think uh, uh, Roman would, would benefit better on the indies or better yet, Lucha Underground? Okay. Uh, also, Gabriel says, uh, uh, I believe Jack Swagger could benefit from leaving WWE and going to Lucha Underground as well as a mega heel, possibly the biggest heel we could ever see in the promotion. From Mars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Him being a real American in a Spanish-speaking fan base. There you go. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun. I feel like they did that in uh, uh, Lucha USA uh, several years ago. You can actually watch that on Hulu still today. So go ahead. Swagger looks so bored on Raw. He did. He did. Um, hashtag uh, uh, WMS big question for your chance to win uh, best of Jimmy DeMarco for this week's question. So hey, please check us out. Uh, support the show as we've talked about. Uh, this, this show doesn't happen without you guys. Uh, it doesn't grow without you guys. Uh, you know, I hope you're sharing the show with people you think are going to dig our our kind of discussion. I know we've got we've had some great comments from you guys uh, uh, lately, and some new people checking out the show. Really, really liking some of our angles. Even talking about TNA. Like one week, I thought I was really worried about TNA conversation here, and uh, uh, we were talking about the schedules a couple weeks ago, and, and we got really good feedback about that. And I really appreciate that. And let us know if we're going the right direction with this uh, for you guys out there as well. So. Uh, but it, but one way you can support us and put some clothes on your back, prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS. Uh, There's not only great designs there by the great Alex Cars, uh, but you can also uh, check out other awesome stuff from uh, CM Punk, some guy named Phil, uh, Dusty Rhodes official merchandise, not that bootleg stuff that Ghoul Dust was suing last night on the Twitters. Uh, and also we have a Spreadshirt shop. If you go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, click on the Mayhem Club banner. There's a newly redesigned uh, it's a very, it's a lot nicer site. It's easier for you to see all of our designs, uh, our MWO Mayhem World Order shirts, our, our you know, uh, like I said, the Mayhem Club, all kinds of stuff. And let us know. We have a little more flexibility there. What kind of items or what kind of shirt ideas would you like us to make, for instance? And uh, we'll get right on that. What, do you want? Do you want the Wrestling Mayhem Show logo on a lunchbox? I'm pretty sure we could put it on a lunchbox for you. We have yeah, it on me. Put it on Where's me. the shirt? We'll put it on LB. Fucking airbrush that shit. There you go. There Across you go. Across my teeth. <laughs> so, and, and if you're going to any of the local indie shows, IWC, RWA, um, please let us know. Are you interested in Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirts? We are looking into potentially doing a run of them. I don't know if we'll maybe do a pre-order sort of thing or, or something, but um, if, if you're, you know, 
just want it in hand if you're you're not a credit card user can't can't order online let us know and we'll, we'll try to do uh, some sort of situation there here in the next uh, couple months here at the local indie shows that we attend so well intend we have a table we might as well use it so please uh, uh go support it's there prowrestlingtees.com slash wms spreadshirt uh link for the wrestling mayhem show and so much more so let's get okay we have fan mail and it's that one that usually kills the show not kills the show but really just like extends the show forever i'm sorry whoever our guest is on indie mayhem show tonight uh but dustin emails us uh what is up national mayhematic accumulative they have accumulated tonight uh, I re- I return after uh, after uh, having been scolded by Mad Mike for my lack of skills in the terms of poetic flow tree, uh, but I true. but I still argue that I I am a better rapper that than two chains and the low bar the one and only literally uh, TNA fan has returned but we are not going to play a game of three questions today oh no oh no I miss I miss I miss skimmed this thing yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Going, sort of. You see, oh no! <laughs> hold on, hold on, fan mail, so you guys can respond as well. Where's my, where's my tag at? There you go. That's where you guys can get at us if you're on video. Good times at wrestlingmamshow.com if you want to uh, uh, also weigh in here. You see, Rizicals, Rizicals, where's he at? Where's he at? There he is. Hi, hi, hi there, Riz. Hi. I'll, I'll put this on you for a moment. You see, Rizicals has made a very profound statement on a Twitter's today. I'm paraphrasing, but the, the gist of his the gist of his point is that you can support a wrestler without supporting the company. Okay, I fully agree with this sentiment, Riz. Okay, he's with you. He's okay. with you, buddy. Okay, uh, keep reading. Okay, okay. But uh, <laughs> the point of the email is to be balanced in the equation. Yes, TNA has done a shit ton of stupid stuff. I cannot deny oh. this. But if we are to support talent, then I have an issue with one of the suggestions brought up. See them at an indie show. Okay. Okay, is that what you said? You, these are your words? That That is part of what I said. Okay, okay, okay. He, he's, he's picking apart what you said. <laughs> I know. You I'm... see, you see, I don't live in a place where indies run weekly. Okay, that's a problem. Okay. I get most of my indie uh, consumption via places like SmartMark or the Promotions Direct website, like with Evolve. As uh, for as shitty of a business TNA is, they have a collection of talent that I personally enjoy. Even if the guy from PWI thinks the business should die, really, that was said. Yeah, that was said. Yeah. Wow. Um, Where where else can I see uh, these talents who I enjoy perform weekly on television? Also, I want to point out some of these guys don't do indies, so. Some, I, I know. So I, I just there's, I'll get, I'll just as a consideration on this. Um, and before we say ROH on Destination America, remember how many talents on that roster get laid off television for weeks at a time, the same way Impact uh, does at times. Uh, for, well, they've only had three weeks wait, on TV. No, no, that's that's not the point because they're still doing shows. That, that doesn't make any difference unless they change things dramatically in the next few weeks. Uh, for all the pitfalls TNA has seen, again, there are many. They have also been a place that introduced me to AJ Styles. They are a company that brought uh, in Bobby Roode. They helped uh, TJ Perkins be able to build a home from the ground up when he was homeless a few years prior. Wow. Uh, They gave Rockstar Spud a chance on national television in the States. And they, sorry, and they have allowed, uh, sorry, I heard something, and I'm the only one here. So Um, they have allowed Michael Hutter the chance to show his brilliance in the EC3 role. Sure, the company is flawed in many ways, but it's not all bad. So this leads into the question I will give to conclude this rambling. If GFW takes over absorbs uh, absorption of TNA is a good way to rebrand TNA, essentially, why take over the talent context that Jarrett seems fit to stink and the stink of the TNA brand goes away with the rising of a new brand? I thank you for your time and opinions. And I think Riz for this topic to discuss. So, so I think there's a lot of. First of Riz, I think you should uh, you have whatever rebuttal agreeance uh, with this topic. I, the reason why I'm re- I I totally totally thank uh, Dustin for agreeing with me. Uh, first of all, mm-hmm. uh, but what I what I was trying to point at is there are other ways to support professional wrestling now. ProWrestlingTees.com. WrestlingTees.com. I even mentioned that in, in my little uh, mini rant, my little mini Riz, Riz rant on Twitter. Um, 
you can you can now give money directly to the professional wrestler without that means of having TNA, WWE, anybody else have they, they they don't have it like it's going to the wrestler directly maybe a little bit towards for us and keys um but they get most of it they get most of the rewards and guys like djz who's always on the indie scene in indie scene and the guys who are on uh man i'm trying to blank. even ec3 is on indie in are do is doing indie shows mm-hmm you can watch them on Smart Mark Video. I think I want to. I, I, I think I want to see them at AIW in a few weeks. Yeah, you, exactly. There are means to which you can watch a product mm-hmm. that you like. Not, nece- not, not necessarily featuring... going to an indie show. You, you, you yeah. in the middle of nowhere. You have access to these people, and yeah, and, you and have access ways. called. You, you have access, like you know, video on demand. Uh, Sorg, you can promote your site, please. PittsburghWrestling.com. Thank you. Uh, and you can go to like Smart Mark, Vi- Smart Mark Video, and you can go to, I believe, $5 Wrestling has stuff like, like that too. Um, but the point is there are other ways to do this besides watching, f- buying $50 for a pay-per-view that means shit. Yeah. Because we already know who's the champion. Mm-hmm. We already know what's going to happen. We already know who's leaving. We already know everything else. But and it, it just and the, the names that he's brought up, Rockstar Spud and EC3 and every, everything around that. That's great. But also you have James Storm pushing somebody off of into a train. And MVP saying the N word on live television. Mm-hmm. So, well, not live. With a live mic. And we're supposed to sit there and go, I'm supporting TNA. I'm supporting the wrestlers, but not the people who put this crap on. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's all I was trying to say. I, I support the, the wrestlers. I'm like I'm like Dustin. I support the wrestlers. I'm not going to buy a pay per view. I barely watch TNA anyways, and I'm gonna still support EC3 and everybody that I like. And it, 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 I, I uh, and I'm going on my little rant here, so I'm I'm, I'm sorry I'm taking too much time. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, it, it, it's kind of concept wise it's kind of like um i don't want to buy the album because i'm not really supporting the band i'm supporting the record label they get a small percentage mm-hmm. of that but i'm going to buy the ticket to the concert i'm going to buy the t-shirt because that does go to them which is yeah. very much happening with the t-shirts although to be fair if you buy the ticket and go to a show unless it's somebody like an ec3 that probably gets a pretty gets a pretty mm-hmm. good payday that you're contributing to um it generally you're not directly supporting them yeah. yeah. For instance, um, but 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 with buying the T-shirt, visiting the merch table, you are much like you go and get the bands the thing. It, it's the same concept it, it, mm-hmm. in the very long run. I think it is, and and, and I think I'm with you on that. And I th- and that is a good th- way to support these guys. I think I made the comparison uh, first. Uh, Man, Mike, you're a big fan of the New York Yankees. You're a powerhouse. That the team's a powerhouse. It's a it has a legacy of its own. It's it's great. I've been a pirate fan for 20 years, for 20 shitty years. Mm-hmm. And I supported the players, but I never put the I never put the money in their pockets. Like I'd never went to the game in Three Rivers when they sucked. I don't even I don't even remember if I had a uh jersey ever ever since I bought a Jason Bay jersey, mm-hmm. which was probably their last good player on a bad team. Uh, which was like half off because they traded them. Um, so I can support the players. I can support the team. And I can also not support the owners. And you can also tell a friend about the wrestler and make them become a fan of the wrestler. Yeah. Like yes. I have, I, I have uh, a, a transcendently by, by, by Rockstar Spud, for instance. Mm-hmm. And EC3 via I, you guys. 
I think it also kind of you also kind of have to look at the relevance of the product though too. Like I, I've said this before, if Slam Anniversary, if the main event Slam Anniversary was EC3 versus Kurt Angle, if that was going to be the main event and it was for the world title. I was going to buy the pay-per-view, mm-hmm. even if I was not a fan of anything else on the card, because I wanted to support that that was the main event. Now, I know the money doesn't go to them, but I feel like if you're going to support a wrestler, you also kind of have to support the segments that they're doing. Like, if they're getting a big push, you want to – like, Kevin Owens is huge right now. I bought a Kevin Owens shirt on WWE. Uh, so I was very excited that Samoa Joe came in. I bought a Samoa Joe shirt on them. Mm-hmm. I bought, I purchased an EC3 shirt from a, from a TNA show. Like, I feel like even though the money may not go directly to that performer, it's showing the company that, hey, this is what we want to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for how many years that company – Hasn't done shit. I don't know about that. Have they improved? No. But there are shimmering glimmers of hope. (laughs) The EC3 Rockstar Spud Feud has been legitimately one of my favorite things of wrestling this year. Okay. Legitimately. Because, Because you can tell it's the performers putting in their input. And to be fair... And to be fair, you don't enjoy absolutely everything on Raw every week either. No, of course not. So. Absolutely not. Honestly, the only show where I can say we honestly enjoy everything that they're playing out on every show is Lucha Underground. Right, right, right. And NXT to a certain degree, but even that's not 100%. So. Oh, NXT has off weeks. It yeah. definitely does. Because I like just, how we're getting a way off topic. Of the, but uh, still. But still I, the actual question. But, but, well, but, but it's, still. It's, about support, it's about supporting people over a corporate yeah. corporation. Yeah. Guys, I want to apologize to everybody. I forgot to get everybody Slammiversary presents. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, just, guys, I just want to put that out there. All right, all right. On that note, on that note, we do need to move on right, here. Go now. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby, for bringing, <sighs> bringing this down. <laughs> Bringing it down. <laughs> All right, let's get along the, along the line. If you're out there, if you're in the chat room, uh, we put this question out on Facebook and uh, Twitter as well, so please respond to us there. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Who wants to go first? Oh, I've oh, so many, so many things. So much educational elements of this week, right? Pick, right. pick one. Mm. Antonio Garza, you're in the house. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I learned that uh, very effective on his up time. It's a really good dancer, and he buys clothes. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and he likes cocaine. He's going to be the first one to eat that. Derek Quaid is going to be the first EGOT. <laughs> yes, yes. DJ Lunchbox, what did you learn? I learned that uh, uh, everybody loves an Apple Watch. <laughs> The best. The best. You get a discount if you buy them in bulk. <laughs> so buy them in Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, uh, Bobby, what did you learn this week? I learned that uh, I get real excited when Cesaro does good things and I tweet Vince McMahon things. <laughs> I tweeted Vince McMahon, how about br- grabbing those brass rings? Or how about that for grabbing brass rings? <laughs> did you see I don't know why. Did you see he flipped John Cena off with the ring fingers? Did he? Nice. Yeah. Wow. Nice. That was a good match. That was a great match. It was amazing. Uh, Mad Mike, what did you learn this week? Uh, I learned that if you're going to do a spot where you have wrestlers fight to the back around your production area, you should make sure that those wrestlers don't actually take out your production area. Also applies to indie wrestling, please. I want to point that out, please. Please. Yeah. Yes, please don't kill Chachi. Please don't, don't. don't kill Chachi. Don't take out my my, my commentary mics. Look at you. you can take out look at, look at you, Mickey object, Knuckles. But... Looking at you. Uh for it's it's yeah, yeah, no, no. That that could like destroy don't somebody's you mean Mama name. Knuckles. What's that? Mama Knuckles, Mama Mickey Mama Knuckles? Knuckles. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh speaking yeah, Mickey of, Knuckles is different, sir. Hi what? <laughs> <laughs> Wheels, what'd you learn? 
I have learned when you need a championship and you just look around anywhere, let's just grab a title that we've changed the name <laughs> as Mike and I put up with last night four times with four different name changes and just call it whatever the hell we want. Just call it the transitional championship. There you go. Why don't we call it the transgender championship? You're a winner, a new you're a winner, a new transitional champion. Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> oh my god, I want that to be a TNA thing now. But it's oh, no, you don't. Impressive. Oh. No. <laughs> you're a winner, a new transitional champion, Rockstar Spud. <laughs> I, want, I want like an indie an indie announcer to accidentally say that at some point and get that on Botchamania. But all right, uh, Matt Carlin's. I think it, wait, I gotta find the button for Matt. Uh, Where are you at? There you are. There thanks, you are. Sword. Hey, what'd you um, learn, buddy? Hey, uh, this week I learned that uh, when you're afraid that your favorite wrestler is uh, about to lose a match on Raw to Jack Swagger. Oh. You have gone to a dark place, and it may be time to find a new favorite wrestler. <laughs> mm-hmm. that, yeah. that place is Mars, Matt. That place is Mars. <laughs> You've gone to Mars. <laughs> wow. I, um, Riz, I Riz, something. Yeah, what'd you learn, Riz? Uh I learned that Seth Rollins isn't allowed at any music festivals for some reason. <laughs> that was great. No explanation. Oh, Is right. There we go. Bobby, you don't know the explanation? Dang it. Uh, yeah, that, that, that comes back to the uh, leaked Little Rollins pictures. What? Oh. Apparently, uh, the person he sent that to, that person's boyfriend is on a band. And <laughs> That oh, band at shows okay. has the band Seth Rollins from all of their shows. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Yep. At least that that's that's what I've heard through the rumor mill. Prohibited <laughs> WWE superstar Seth Rollins and uh laser pointers. Mm-hmm. Um, I also mm-hmm. want to see Kane strip to Hawaii. Can that be on the network? Yes! <laughs> Yes, I, that's, that's what I learned this week. I learned that <laughs> I learned that the best thing is going to be if Kane, on the way to uh, Japan, stops in Hawaii just to film a vignette of his his trip that he won. <laughs> like the timing well, is uncanny. They have to do something with this. Hashtag, well, just, hashtag Kane gets laid. They can just oh, tape oh. it in Hawaii in, in Japan and just say it's Hawaii. Oh, everybody, that's close enough. That's I, no oh, Riz. Oh, oh. That's racist. Yeah, that's kind if, of if it isn't like the final scene of Office Space, I'll be disappointed. Isn't there, ah, isn't, yes! isn't there, isn't there a uh, this the song of from Lonely Island where they go to Japan and then there's this one ra- one random shot in Hawaii for no no reason? <laughs> wow, oh, no even good. better. Get the label to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even better. Kane standing on top of a volcano, putting his hands up and getting ready to bring them down, and the whole villagers rushing. <laughs> But it's old stock I think, I think we have Kane starring in Dante's Peak 2. <sighs> All right, guys. Kane. Let us know. Oh, wait. wait. There was one. There was one. I'm going to have to. But no, that that's serious. That's what I learned is, is the Hawaii thing. Uh, that, that entire segment was just so entertaining, and it shouldn't have been so entertaining. Um, we talked about this a bit on, on the Raw Wrap-Up last night, so please please go check that out and our, our extended discussion on that. By the way, uh, sir, that uh, was a Cadillac. That was a Cadillac? <laughs> I yes. also love yeah, Triple was, H brought up Katie yeah. Vick on the uh, preview. Yeah. Katie Vick was brought up on thing. the on the preview for Monday Night Wars uh, as we discussed earlier. Uh, Kyle <laughs> on the on the uh, uh, Wrestling Mayhem show group. Uh, as far as what you learned this week, that Sylvester Lafort from NXT should be the one doing the Macho Man impression instead of Sandow. Okay, and that Cesaro proved that he can handle a big singles push. Down. Now I, I'm with that. I'm completely with that. So we'll um, see what happens. Hmm. I don't know if he'll be able to overcome the incredible might of Diego. Diego. So uh, let us know what you think. Uh, what did what you learn from this week and so much more? At Mayhem Show on the Twitters, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook, Facebook group, and Google+. Plus, or drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address. Good. 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 Good.
that's, that's very wow. annoying. Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com. Everybody just goes into business for themselves at that point. Uh, go to WrestlingMamShow.com for all the links to the social media, as well as subscribing to us so you don't miss an episode on so many platforms. Get it in your podcast or your YouTube, wherever that may be. And uh, and, and please uh, check out our friends, uh, Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com. We're talking about We might get them on uh, one of these shows here very soon. I understand they're working on a new album. So maybe we'll get them here talking wrestling or tech over on Awesome Cast. Uh, so that would be cool. And we got some fun guests uh, lined up here in the next few weeks. A little bit of, of variety here. And uh, hey, big thanks. Uh, th- thanks, Antonio Garza, for joining us again. I'm going to try to keep you in the rotation here. Uh, you're a regular contributor, of course, on the Midweek War. Uh, so uh, go check that out. Uh, how how are you, how are you um, uh, doing on your Wednesday nights? Are you surviving pretty well over there? It, it's hard. Don't, it's, don't don't give any secrets. No, no, it's <laughs> seven hours of wrestling plus it's podcasting. It's hard. <laughs> exactly. So what's going on at uh, WrestlingRevolution.com? Uh, what, what can people find over there? Uh, well, the WrestlingRevolution.com is mostly uh, a review site. Uh, there are many, 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 many reviews of uh, both the WWE, TNA, New Japan, any type of show. So that's what we do. Like mostly review the shows. Okay. I'm awesome. Over this list. Awesome. Go check it out, guys. And, of course, uh, check out everybody on the tours. I'm at Sorotron. Check out at Sawtooth Willie, at DJ Lunchbox, at uh, Panel Riot, at Riz Plays Games, at Riz IU. No, at the e I, I went old school <laughs> on that one. At Bobby FG Town, at Mad Mike4883, uh, at Mainstream Matt with one T, at Bobby FJ Town, at Hot uh, Wheels RWA. And I think I got everybody there. Uh, we'll and see you next time. Trump. And as I said that one, I think. Uh, we'll see you Things guys next time. TV. Mayhem yeah. Show out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.